Brady earns another trip to the free throw line. And here's what he's done tonight. Looking to get to his 11th consecutive game with 30 plus. If he does that, he would tie Shaquille O'Neal for the best streak of 30 plus since the 91 92 season. I think that he'll accomplish that quite easily. I'm trying to figure out when when he's going to stop getting third. That's, exactly. He's going to have to have an off night or probably probably when Kobe Bryant stops getting 40. <laughs> exactly. But that'll be a good game after this because now you, you have a guy on the perimeter who can really give him a challenge in Bruce Bowling yep. in San Antonio. Steven Jackson is also an excellent defender for that team. So you know those guys are amped up to take on that challenge. San Antonio and the Lakers, that's what's coming up next in the second part of her doubleheader. Iverson drops it down after he finally got free of Jacques Vaughn. 39-18 and still trailing in the game. McGrady tries to create out to Armstrong. Great pointer. No good, but look at Burke after the rebound. Didn't put it down. Then Iverson leaks out on everyone and gets the layup. Wow. And Pat Burke is probably kicking himself. He had an easy look at it. And when he missed it, Allen Iverson took, tore out. Got an easy one. And then the turnover, McKee's going to get a layup as well. <laughs> well, Philadelphia. They finish this out with a 10 nothing run. They're just warming up for the fourth quarter, like you said, John. And this full court pass, McKee looks like Donovan McNabb. <laughs> Tossing it out to a wide out. Allen Iverson sprint down the field for an easy one. The 76ers are at their best in the open floor. NBA Friday on ESPN as advertised. Steve Mack. Uh, he's just so big and, and long like we talked about, and he can take the ball off the dribble. He's a magician with the basketball, and he can go outside. But Philadelphia with a 10-0 run to end that quarter. They're their best in the open floor. Allen Iverson gets maybe his first easy bucket of the night. And then you can't throw air passes with these guys hanging around. You remember the year? that the 76ers made it to the finals. They absolutely swarmed in the open floor. They picked off any lazy pass, errant pass that you made. And that was reminiscent of the, the good old days. Two Ten. years, two years ago. The good old Three years days. ago. <laughs> Not that long ago, but that 10-0 run. Oh, there he brings it back at the last minute, puts some English on that ball. Yeah, the old reverse finger roll. McGrady then answers back with a jumper. He has 26, closing in on 30 again in what would be the 11th consecutive game for McGrady. It's going to take a major cat a catastrophe for him not to hit 30. Buckner lobs it into Skinner. Good catch. The clerk denies him. Gets a block. On the floor. Comes right back to Skinner. He falls over to clerk. No call. Hit it the other way. It's all these bodies on the floor. Miller looking to drive on the key. Garrity. Three-pointer. No good. To Armstrong, back out to McGrady, his three-pointer on the way, and McGrady is good. <laughs> this guy, it's just a different world when you can step into threes with that kind of confidence. I see Tracy McGrady steps into that three, and you see the Nets. This boy is torturing the Nets right now. Brady on the floor, goes right to the goal. Coleman got over there. And now, it looks like Buckner is down, and he is well holding his face. And McGrady's upset, and, and I have to agree with him. He just got hammered. He just slammed into him when he went, went up with the basketball. I don't know, if you don't get a foul on that play, when do you get one? And the play came to an end. And, and you hear the whistle, but not when you expected to see it. Uh, well, yeah, he's upset about it. He's going up to slam this ball, and Derek Coleman just took him out. And Derek Coleman takes him out thinking, I'm going to make him earn those two at the free throw line rather than let him dunk the ball on us. And he still doesn't get the foul. 
Well, Kevin, you want to talk about 40-point games. Kobe Bryant has a third of the 40-point games in the NBA this season. They're 8-3 uh -huh. in his 40-point games for T-Mac. They're 4-1, and one. and for Paul Pierce, the Celtics are 4-0, and oh, but McGrady may get 30 again tonight. He needs one oh. more. Can Kobe get 40 again tonight? McGrady will make it 30 tonight, but if Kobe Bryant goes for 40 against easily one of the best defensive teams in this league and the Lakers win, I think he is unquestionably the front runner for the MVP. One, there's a little problem of communication as to when that test was supposed to take place. So he has passed the test and will be back with the team for the next game against Toronto. But, but in the meantime, the ball club suffers because he's a guy who could have put down a full down double digit rebound for you tonight. Exactly. Do you miss him on a glass? But Tracy McGrady saying we miss you, big fella, but we'll try and get it done without you. And, and that kind of play right there by Tracy McGrady, that's what separates the good players from the great players and the superstars. He goes up with intense concentration. He needs to make this shot. There's not a lot of room for error here in the last three minutes when you're down by six. Iverson trying to answer back. No good. Burke had Coleman sealed. And the foul goes against Burke. Uh, here's Tracy McGrady just being a superstar. Garrity, nice penetration, sets him up. Kenny Thomas overcommits a little bit, but the stop and pop from the top of the key, and he hits nothing but the bottom for point number 31. The Magic can fill it up. Every single player can knock down the three ball or put the ball on the floor and get to the bucket. Brady spins it back out to Miller. Long three. That is perfect in pure. Well, you put the ball in Tracy McGrady's hands, you can almost run like that old North Carolina four corners. I mean, you can spread the floor. Everybody else on the floor can knock down the jumper. Let him penetrate and create for other players on the floor. One point game. Van Horn to Snow. McKee drives along the baseline. And that is where that defensive presence, not having another big guy, not having quite the foundation. You need guys to come over and help from that weak side. That's where that comes back to kill you. You've clawed your way back into this game. There's a minute left, and you let a guy go right down the baseline. There aren't any shot blockers to challenge Aaron McKee, and it's all fun and smiles and Philly. You talked about that defensive lapse of Orlando. It is even worse because this three is so huge to get you to within one. It's gigantic. And so you work so hard, and then you allow this to happen. Aaron McKee goes right down the baseline, and there's no one to stop him from penetrating. No one meets him outside the lane, and there's no one there to contest the shot as well. So Doc Rivers has gone small, and so Larry Brown doing likewise, putting Derek Coleman on the bench. Garrity's three off the mark, rebounded by Iverson. Uh, you see how that play develops. McGrady going off a little pick and roll, freeing Garrity up. If you don't switch that, McGrady comes off, he has a mismatch. Great help and recover by the 76ers. No, over top of Vaughn, comes up short. Ball on the floor, chased down into the hands of Tracy McGrady. Armstrong. McGrady and Iverson hooked up. There's that battle as they match themselves. Down the stretch, but off the glass, Miller gets the deuce. A heads up play by Mike Miller. The other Magic players are so intent on putting up a three they had ample opportunities to penetrate and take that ball to the bucket. The foul as Snow tried to just release the pass.